all the way back in the olden days of 2021, Noct released its much anticipated NHP1 CPU cooler, designed for fanless operation from the ground up. Naturally, LTT popped an i7-11700K on it with predictable results. GN went the AMD route using a 3950X and a 3800X, again, with predictable results. But at least, they had the decency to toss in a 3600. But nobody seems to know what the NHP1 was designed for. I don't blame them. I'm not entirely sure Noctua knows. Much like Easter Island, the NHP1 has all the hallmarks of a practical joke that's just gotten way out of hand. So let me help you out with this one. Noctua Marketing Department, audiophiles, slap on a couple of capacitors, maybe a vacuum tube, and say something like this in the marketing. Our two base quantum tunnel duplex heat pipes transform CPU frequencies at a molecular level. I will accept payment for my brilliant marketing idea in the form of Noctua fans attached to a 4080. But seriously, digital audio workstations. Every PC in a recording studio needs maximum stufu, and the NHP1 should be able to deliver that. CPU usage on a DAW is bursty, with the occasional sustained loads for tracking and rendering, but that's something the HP1 should be able to handle given the right CPU and case. In the box, we get a big block of metal. Here's a Threadripper cooler for comparison. It's completely silent, but then again, so is this TR4 SP3, even with a fan on. Can't explain that. We also get some mounting hardware for AMD and their competitors, a backplate, and this neat screwdriver with a specialized bit on the end. Not only is it useless for anything else, it looks quite silly, taped to the side of a case, and that's where you better keep it, because good luck finding it in five years when you replace the cooler. Installation is straightforward. Pop off the AMD brackets, add the spacers, and install the new ones. And this is pretty neat. They're labeled 3 and 4. Make sure you use 4 for socket aim for newer. And by the way, you can use your original backplate. Just don't count on it sticking to the back like I was. Now it's time to drop on a thermal pad, install the cooler, and use that ridiculous single-use screwdriver to tighten it down. And if you're using a thermal pad, remember to use a light to check the positioning after tightening down the cooler. Now it's time to add a 140mm fan on the intake. And this is what we end up with. The 140mm fan is set to run at 500 RPMs, that's just enough to wheeze air over the PCI Express cards and the NHP1 should convect everything out of the top. The fan in the back is unplugged, it's only there for emotional support. Since I don't want YouTubers to have all the fun, I'm going to compile kernel 6.8 to overload the NHP1 and see how bad the 5600G throttles. This is 12 threads running at 3.99 GHz for 10 minutes straight. We start with an idle temp of 50.27, going all the way up to 72.38 at the 5 minute mark, and finally reaching 79.62 at the end of compilation. Moving on to a realistic test, this is a 10 minute render in Reaper. Here we start out with an idle temp of 48.66, crawling up to 53.12 at the 5 minute mark, and ending at 53.75 at the end of the 10 minute render, which is about the same as the 120 millimeter AIO that the NHP1 replaced. So what did we learn? The NHP1 is a solid choice for building a digital audio workstation. If you stick with a 65 watt or lower CPU, squeeze in just a little bit of air in a properly ventilated case and work in a climate controlled environment. But before you do anything, be sure to check out the NHP1 compatibility chart for your CPU, motherboard, case, and RAM. Link in the video description. But that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to visit interfacinglinux.com for the write-up and check out our forums. But most importantly, get out there and make something awesome. <laughs>